Hi, welcome everyone. Today, seems like a lot of you are getting trouble with air in your central heating systems. You're finally getting noises, banging, you're getting problems when you've drained out a little bit of water to do a radiator change or anything like that. You're getting problems with the thing not working properly. A lot of the rads may not be going, all sorts of problems like this. So we need to take a careful kind of look at your heating systems. Now this usually only occurs in f &E type systems mainly. It can occur in obviously combi systems and pressurized ones if there's a bit of sludge around. But in the main this usually is an f &E system type failure. So I have to get asked what things do I try simply straight from the off. Well there's obviously a, a few simple things you can try when you start to get radiators not working obviously you try bleeding them first of all obviously with the air key that's quite simple and elementary but then you've done that and it's still not going i've obviously given you the, the uh, videos on how to balance your system and obviously check the essential heating pumps running all these are kind of just normal things to check also the freeway valve is opening and you're all tickety boo in that area if you're all certain that that is working okay you've got air problems, you've drained something out, you've altered the radiator, that's when you get the problem with the air system. So when you've got that, what you've got to try and do is get that air out there and it's not very easy because some of the heating systems that have been designed and put out there are pretty awful. I'm going to show you some of the ones that are pretty awful in the way they've been actually plumbed in. So let's take a look. Here we have a fairly common type of system I've drawn in roughly here, sorry about my terrible drawings, where the flow from the boiler goes up and it hits a motorized valve and it shoots off left and right around the heating system or around the hot water tank. So as you can see, if that freeway valve was not working and it was only working for the hot water, you wouldn't get any heating at all. But that the fact you'd get nothing at all, you'd know to go to look at the motorized valve. Obviously the pump, you know to check that that's working, put your hand on it. All little things like this. Now this is another little thing you find in your airing cupboard. There's a little link pipe often goes across between the flow and the return. And that little thing's got a valve on it a lot of times, a little red valve, we call it a bypass valve, we call it. And that should be never fully opened, it should only be right off and just back about a couple of turns, that's all. It's just a safety bypass in case all the rads in your house have got thermostatic rad valves and they've all shut down. That's so that the pump won't burn out. Because if it had nowhere to go and all the valves were shut, it would some sort the, the pump out, the, it would burn out pretty quickly. So this is like what's called a bypass if you've got one of those. Just make sure it's not wide open though, because otherwise it would tend to want to go round there and do this instead of going to the radiators. So it's another little tip if you've got one of those in your cupboard. Have a look for that. So what else is wrong here? There's nothing too much wrong. It's not too bad a system, but as that pumps around the heating here, you also will find that it probably tries to draw air down the vent here. I know it's, it's mad, but it can do. And also, sometimes it's best to have a little valve on here to govern the amount of heating that goes around the hot water tank, because that could starve the flow going off to the radiators. If, if that's going full whack through there, it might find that an easier trip than going off around the radiator circuits or going all around the house. So sometimes you'll find quite often it's, it's good to have a valve here, say, or here, and just govern it down a little bit again so that it balances out with the heating system. Here's another system plumbed a lot better than the other one I was showing you, in that the, the flow comes up and the pump is on there, going into the freeway valve, and then going up into the cylinder and back round. Only problem with this one is, is that you could get air stuck there on that on the elbow. This is the type of thing you've got to look out for. So there, it would be advised to have a little stalk going up with an air cap on it, so you could release any air that got stuck in there. Because when you drain the system out for anything, when you go to fill it up, that's going to lock on that top bit there. So that's another kind of thing you've got to look for when you've got any problems with air. We're not going a lot of times. Us plumbers, you might find there's a bend on there. We, we, what we do is we tend to undo it a couple of turns, let the air out, and then do it back up again. But I understand that you wouldn't want to risk something like that in case you 
got a lead and couldn't get it back up. But uh, say the fact is on this boiler, they've got the vent coming off of here, going up there, which which kind of is the right place, but it still could draw air down, although it should draw water from there if it was going to draw anything. So it is in the right place. But I'll show you another way out of getting this problem with pulling air into your system. Here then we have another one of my terrible shocking drawings. <laughs> boiler down here, and this system gets rid of the air really easy and simple by using what's called an air separator. You can have this installed in your heating system but it would probably mean some of the pipes would need altering in the airing cupboard. See in this system the flow comes right up almost to the top of the airing cupboard. It goes into this thing called an air separator. I won't go into the workings of it but basically the cold feed drops into it, the vent comes out of it and the flow carries on down pumped and then into the freeway valve and it kind of never pulls air down that vent. It's, it's static, it doesn't allow that to happen. So therefore, you no longer get a load of air being pulled in. That's a fairly simple way, but there is one other way left that we can do this and stop the air coming in. What else can we do? If we go back to this drawing, you can imagine these pipes are in the air and cover, they normally are. But what we could do, if you could find out, a lot of manufacturers will allow their boilers to be pressurized now. So we have another way of doing it. If you could find out if yours can be pressurized in a pressurized system, you could actually cut all these pipes off and do away with all of this. We get rid of the tank, we get rid of the vent, we get rid of the cold feed, we get rid of the main. Assuming it's all in the airing cupboard and it's nice and easy to cut them through, if your boiler, as I say, can be pressurized and do check, some can't, so but you can check and see if some can. If it can, then you could just cut the main here, put a filling loop across to the cold feed here, put a pressure vessel on, and on the feed down, you could put a free bar relief valve in case it's over pressured. That allows any over pressurizing to go outside the property, and you've made this a sealed system. And what that does then obviously is not allow any air to be pulled from anywhere and it should totally end your air problems with this type of, of conversion. Can I just confirm, so this pipe here, you've got a pipe here going outside? Yep, that's a pipe going outside the property. Okay, I don't get it, if you've got rid of your tank up here, how's the water coming in to the system? Uh, well, this is the mains up here, we have what's called a filling loop fitted across here. It's got two check valves either side of it, basically. I haven't bothered to draw those in because it's a very quick little drawing. But basically, once that's tied into your cold feed here and you've got a pressure vessel, and again, that's got to be the right type and size, you can get kits, okay, for specific sizes of heating systems. You put your, your vessel on, basically, and then what happens is you tear it down to this relief valve that's just, it's an emergency really, because if you went over three bar, um, obviously it would be dodgy. So the idea is, a bit like a combi boiler, it's got to be kept down probably to about one bar, 1 1.2 to 1 1.5. Uh, if you over pressurize it, obviously it would then open and the water would run outside, so taking the pressure out of the system. So, sorry, so what about this piece of pipe here that goes up? Yeah, it's cut off. So it's cut off there. So what, what would you just pipe, pipe it off, plug it off? Yeah, this one here, what we do with this one, actually I did forget to show it properly, what would be best here, as it comes up off the cylinder, would be to cut it there and have a, an air valve on there. So we'll put that down, shall we? Air yeah, valve. That makes more sense, yeah. On there. So that pipe is now gone, okay, and you, your, your air valve on there to release any air out of the top of the system there. I should have included that, so well said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, part of the drawing. So that then that takes care of all those pipes, all that heat, but obviously I wouldn't suggest you try and do this, probably best to get a plumber in to do it. But if you've got long-term problems with air and it keeps coming back, this is another way of getting in over the problem. So why did they have a tank here with the water coming in in the very first place when That's they That's an old this? idea, yeah, it's I called it an F and E system feed tank an expansion pipe and it's just a way to keep topping up the heating as it gets expanded and used. Obviously with a pressurised system you will have to keep pressurising it every so often and obviously if you've got any leaks anywhere they must be fixed and sorted out so if you're worried about leaks and possibly maybe the pipes not being up to taking a little bit more pressure then 
but obviously don't do that system. This is kind of like a, a, a do or die system when you've quite had enough of air. <laughs> you don't want to get over the problem. But I say it's not for everyone and some boilers won't be suitable for it. But it's just another idea I'm putting to you out there. Oh, thank you. That's all my questions answered. <laughs> Good. Back to our conventional system again. And you can see, as I say, the, the problems that can happen. I mean, especially if you start to get sludge building up anywhere, uh, you get sludge spots and then it starts to draw air in. Um, you can get a sludge point, you know, any hot point here, it could be there, I say it could be up there. So what happens, it kind of, you get this sludge point and when it starts to block the pipe, the flow, what happens then is it, it actually can draw air down instead to this pipe. So say there's a blockage here, this hot point here, which is this one would be a particular bad point. Um, it would actually slow and draw it down there. It, it works in a very peculiar way once sludge starts getting involved. So if you haven't had your system cleaned in the last few years or you haven't got any inhibitor in there, then you, the sludge may well be causing your air problems anyway. So it'd be well worth cleaning the system first then put in the and then try and all your system to see if it cures your air problems before you go doing anything drastic like I've showed you. There we are, the very last sort of thing, if you're really desperate about a rad that keeps on airing up and you've got just one doing it and you don't want to be bothered with all that, well you can always stick what's called an Aladdin air valve in the radiator and it automatically gets rid of the air for you. Now obviously it doesn't cure the problem why you're getting the air in the first place but it will see you over a hurdle. So that's another sneaky little way around. If you've just got one you know and you think no no I'm not, not going to do all that. <laughs> but anyway I hope that kind of helps explain why with f &E systems you get air contamination and you get this banging because once you get air it not only stops things working but you often get bangs and crashes and people mistake that for a total blockage which it can be sludge don't get me wrong but a lot of time it is air and that is the problem once it's in the system so there's a few little things there you can look at I know they're beyond most DIY people's means but it's something that you could say with you know, you wanted this done, you could go to a plumber and say, you know, is this a way forward, getting rid of this air problem that I keep getting? So, something to look at. You know, you've got a little bit more knowledge about it now than you've had maybe before. <laughs> okay, well, that's about it, though. Uh, usual, all my place, you know, all my stuff, all my, st all my stuff, usual place, Derrick and 33. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.